Welcome back students. Now in this section, I will be talking to you about enzyme inhibition. Is this important? Yes, important not only from an exam point of view, but important from the point of view of pharmacology, important clinically, important anytime. So what is this enzyme inhibition and what are the different characteristics of these different enzyme inhibitions? Now what are inhibitors? Inhibitors are substances which decrease the rate of reaction or decrease the velocity of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So, or if they either stop the enzyme catalyzed reaction completely or slow it down. Now, inhibition can be of two types irreversible inhibitor or reversible inhibition. Now, irreversible means the inhibitor binds covalently at this active site. Look at it. Now, again, I am emphasizing the word covalently. So, inhibitor binds covalently at the active site. These are highly toxic substances and that is why they lead to irreversible enzyme inhibition. Now, reversible enzyme, reversible enzyme inhibition, the inhibitor binds non-covalently. That is the main difference between irreversible and reversible. Now, other than this, enzyme activity, enzyme inhibition, enzyme inhibition can be classified basically based on two important characteristics. Where does the inhibitor binding and where is the substrate binding? So, based on this, we have two different types of inhibitions. Remember, both these types can be reversible or irreversible, but most of them, I'll tell you as I go ahead, how they are affected. Now, inhibitors, uh, as I said, can be of two types. The first type is the competitive inhibition. What do you mean by competitive? It means that there are two substances which are competing against each other. So, there is a race. The race is between the substrate and the inhibitor to race to reach the finish line. Which is the finish line? The finish line is the active site. So, both the inhibitor and the substrate want to go and bind to the active site. Is it possible? Don't you know that active site is very specific, very, uh, you know, it is very, it is highly specific. So, how will it allow anybody else to come and bind to it? It will allow if it is a substrate analog. It gets confused whether it is a substrate or it is an inhibitor. So, that means there is a lot of similarity between the substrate and the inhibitor. So, both of them will compete to bind to the active site. So, here I have inhibitors that are structurally similar to the substrate. We call them as substrate analogs. They compete with the substrate to bind at the active site. Usually, competitive inhibition is reversible. How is it reversible? We add more and more substrate. The enzyme thinks everything is the substrate and will keep on binding and binding to the substrate. So, it will keep on catalyzing the reaction. So, it becomes reversible. Now, the, the effect of the inhibition can be overcome by adding high substrate concentration. These are the three main important features of competitive inhibition. So, if you look at the what will be the effect of a presence of an inhibitor on the kinetics, on the rate of reaction of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So, for this, if I am going to draw a graph of, of the substrate versus the velocity of the reaction, what will happen? So, if this is the normal thing. As I said, it is a rectangular hyperbolic graph that is got. Now, this is in the present, normally, this enzyme in the presence of this substrate will act like this. It is, this is the graph, the enzyme velocity of the graph will be like this. But suppose there is an inhibitor present, what will happen against the same substrate? Remember, the substrate is the same, but there is also an inhibitor. The enzyme is confused because it has got an inhibitor present on it and it has to affect, what will be the effect on the same enzyme uh, same reactions of the same velocity of the uh, enzyme against the same substrate. Now, an inhibitor is also present. So, in the presence of an inhibitor, the, en the velocity of the reaction, what will happen, will be somewhat like this. So, what does it show to you? As we increase the substrate concentration, the inhibition may be overcome. But here, what is important is the V max is not changed. If the V max is not changed, what will happen to the graph? What will happen? Half of this is here. So, if I put a this like this, 
if you look at the substrate concentration at half Vmax, we'll have different Km values. So the Km, this is a normal Km and this is in the presence of a inhibitor. So the Km, what has happened to Km? Km has been increased. So the basic characteristic of a competitive inhibition will be that Vmax remains the same and the Km is increased. This is this Km is also called as the apparent Km. Now the same thing can be shown in the form of a line weaver birth plot. However, since it is an exam point of view, this is not so significant, not so uh, required. I am just going to draw a small diagram and I will show to you how it will look. Vmax is not altered, Km is altered. As I said, this is Vmax. This is in the presence of a inhibitor. So, in the presence of an inhibitor, Km is altered, Vmax is not altered. In a line weaver bar plot also, we can show it like this. So, in case a graph is asked and asked to identify, look at the Vmax and look at the Km and you come to know what type of inhibition it is. Now, what is the importance of knowing about different competitive inhibitors? Most of the drugs act via competitive inhibition. So one of the classic example is the sulfonamides. Now the sulfonamides are structural analogs of PABA. What is PABA is para amino benzoic acid. You need not know it but just know that they are structural analogs of PABA. But they function as antibacterial drugs. Now sulfonamides, these are the inhibitor competitively inhibit dihydro steroid synthetase, the enzyme and they block the synthesis of folic acid from paramino benzoic acid, the substrate in bacteria. This is what is happening in bacteria. There is an enzyme called as dihydropteroid synthetase which synthesizes folic acid from PABA and sulfonamides inhibited and thereby the bacteria will not, will not multiply. Now the other thing is, uh, one more important drug is methotrexate. Methotrexate is a structural analog of folic acid and it is used as an anti-cancer drug. Methotrexate is the inhibitor which competently inhibits folate reductase, the enzyme. The product of the enzyme is tetrahydrofolate which is essential for the synthesis of DNA and cell division. So when methotrexate, this is happening in the human body, it will competently inhibit folate reductase, thereby it will act as an anti-cancer drug and prevent the uh, cancer cells from dividing. So methotrexate can act as an anti-cancer drug. Other thing, one more important if, uh, important application of competitive inhibition is allopurinol. Allopurinol is used in the treatment of gout. Allopurinol is an inhibitor, competently inhibits xanthine oxidase which is an enzyme and blocks the formation of uric acid from xanthine. Thereby it prevents the accumulation of uric acid which is the problem in gout. Now there are one more important things, uh, one more important inhibitor those are statins, example lovastatin which are very commonly prescribed nowadays and they are used in clinical practice to lower the serum cholesterol levels. So statins are the inhibitor, they compete with the enzyme HMG-CoA which is this the substrate, substrate is HMG-CoA for the active site of HMG-CoA reductase, the enzyme is HMG-CoA reductase. So statin is the inhibitor of the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. So thereby they decrease the cholesterol synthesis in liver.